At 2, 11 a.m. UTC on August 6, 2025, the James Webb Space Telescope caught something no one could explain. It wasn't a typical comet spectrum. No frozen water bands, no faint silicate glow. Instead, Webb's instruments detected a chaotic pattern of light and chemistry that didn't belong anywhere in known physics. In the middle of the data was a flash, a pulse so powerful it momentarily overloaded Webb's infrared spectrometer. The numbers pouring down the monitors looked impossible. Nickel without iron, carbon dioxide levels that dwarfed any comet on record, and a sudden acceleration that ignored gravity altogether. Then silence, that was the last confirmed signal ever received from 3i Atlas. A single burst of information, then total blackout. And buried inside that burst, scientists now believe was a message. The first signs came quietly. Astronomers at the European Southern Observatory noticed a strange fluctuation in the object's tail. Jets venting carbon dioxide thousands of kilometers from the nucleus, far beyond where sunlight could heat the ice. At the same moment, Webb recorded spectral lines that shouldn't exist, pure nickel emissions at specific wavelengths, without any trace of iron. That single absence shocked everyone. Throughout history, wherever nickel appears in the cosmos, iron follows. They form together in stars, condense together in meteorites, and remain inseparable across billions of years. But 3i Atlas had broken that law. Chemically, it didn't make sense. The ratios weren't random. They were perfect, as if the object had been designed to isolate one element from another. The anomaly was so profound that, within hours, the James Webb team suspended ongoing exoplanet surveys and reoriented the telescope to follow Atlas directly. Dozens of observatories followed suit, from Mauna Kea to Paranal. Telescopes around the world stopped everything they were doing to watch a single fragment of light hurtling through space. By dawn on August 7th, the picture was clear and terrifying. Atlas wasn't just venting gas, it was doing it rhythmically. Infrared sensors showed heat pulses occurring every few hours, timed so precisely that the data looked mechanical. A 7.2-hour cycle of brightness repeated again and again, with no deviation. Normal comets tumble chaotically, outgassing throws them off balance. But Atlas rotated like a gyroscope, smooth, constant and controlled. The same pattern appeared across multiple instruments, a repeating heartbeat in light, temperature and motion. It was as though something deep inside was running on a timer. Even more disturbing were the acceleration readings. Between August 7th and 10th, the object began to move faster, not from gravity, not from jets of vapor, but in clean bursts of motion lasting seconds at a time. Each pulse matched the same rhythm as the thermal pattern. Outgassing couldn't explain it. Radiation pressure couldn't either. Something was pushing 3i Atlas deliberately. NASA called it a non-gravitational acceleration. Privately, engineers started calling it something else, thrust. By August 12th, a full-spectrum analysis was complete. The results were unlike anything recorded before. At the molecular level, Atlas was releasing nickel carbonyl, a toxic gas that can form only under precise pressure and temperature conditions. When exposed to ultraviolet radiation, nickel carbonyl breaks apart explosively, releasing pure nickel atoms and energy. In other words, sunlight alone could make it move. That meant the object might be using photochemical reactions, essentially light-powered propulsion. The more sunlight it absorbed, the more controlled energy it released. To some, it looked like a form of primitive self-propulsion, a system that could sustain movement without fuel tanks or engines. If this theory is right, 3i Atlas wasn't a random rock. It was built to travel. Then came the final transmission. On August 15th, the James Webb Telescope recorded one last spectral burst from the object. It arrived as a massive packet of data spanning ultraviolet, visible, and infrared light all compressed into a single, structured pulse. At first glance, it was just another energy spike. But when the team decoded the intensity curve, they noticed three distinct phases, each separated by exactly 11 minutes. Inside those phases were microscopic variations in brightness, rhythmic, mathematical and ordered, not random, not noise, a repeating numerical pattern based on prime intervals, prime sequences, 
the universal mathematical language, the same logic humans once proposed for interstellar communication. If that sounds familiar, it's because prime-based patterns were part of early SETI experiments. To many researchers, it looked deliberate, a signal encoded not in radio, but in light. And then, as suddenly as it began, the signal stopped. No further emissions, no more acceleration, no detectable heat. 3i Atlas went dark, completely inert, as if something had turned it off. NASA released a short statement claiming the event was likely a natural chemical outburst. But internal memos tell a different story. According to leaked documents from the Planetary Defense Coordination Office, Atlas was flagged as a Level 1 anomaly, a classification normally reserved for impact threats or potential artificial structures. Dozens of researchers were asked to submit independent analyses, but most of their drafts were rejected or delayed indefinitely. Meanwhile, whispers spread through private astrophysics circles. If the signal was artificial, who or what sent it? Some proposed a more haunting idea. That Atlas wasn't sending a message to us but through us. That the burst wasn't a greeting, it was a relay. A transmission meant for something else in the outer solar system. Within a week, SETI arrays in California, China and Australia began scanning nearby coordinates, looking for an echo. They found none but an unexplained electromagnetic ripple was detected by magnetometers in Earth orbit. A faint echo repeating the same 7.2-hour cycle once seen in Atlas's spin. A coincidence, perhaps, or a reply. By late August, the object had crossed the orbit of Mars, still silent, still cooling. But its trajectory remained strange, hyperbolic, slightly curved, as if tugged by something unseen. A few astronomers suggested gravitational interaction with an undiscovered massive body beyond Neptune, perhaps a fragment of dark matter, perhaps something else. Others proposed something more unsettling, that the curve wasn't gravitational at all, but guided, that whatever controlled Atlas might still be doing so, just quietly. The theories now split into three camps. One, the conservative view. 3i Atlas is natural just an exotic byproduct of alien chemistry. If true, then the galaxy's materials are far stranger than we ever thought possible. 2. The hybrid theory. The comet began as a natural body, later modified, infused with engineered materials or technology, maybe billions of years ago. A drifting relic, still carrying traces of design. And 3. The unspoken one. 3i Atlas was a vessel, a construct that had traveled light years across space, disguised as a comet, its final act to broadcast a coded message before shutting down. No one can prove which is true, but the evidence nickel without iron. Rhythmic acceleration, perfect spin, structured signal remains. And so does the silence. Today, Atlas continues its path out of the solar system, trailing dust and frozen gas a dim ember fatting into the void. Webb, Hubble and ground-based telescopes still monitor it from afar, waiting for another pulse, another flash, anything. Nothing has come. Some say the final transmission was nothing more than dying chemistry. Others believe it was a farewell, a closing statement from something that once lived, thought, and traveled the stars before us. Either way, it has left humanity with a question that won't go away. When something from the dark sends a message in the language of math and light. What exactly is it trying to say? 3i Atlas may never answer, but in its silence, it's already changed us, forcing us to see our place in the cosmos not as observers, but as part of a much older conversation still echoing across the stars. Because maybe the most important discovery isn't that it spoke, but that we were finally listening.